Welcome, my God Today followers here in the USA and all around the world. Hi, my name is Brother Stephen Party, SVD, and I am a member of the Missionary Order, the Society of the Divine Word. So today it is Tuesday, January 4th, 2020. Well, John tells us today that two men discovered Jesus. Maybe he was one of the two, although he doesn't say so. Yet later on, he notes the exact time, four o'clock in the afternoon in Galilee in spring, and a time he would not only not forget, but would memorialize for all eternity. So in reading this, it is interesting that both of these men were evidently intrigued by him, but they didn't approach. Jesus, it says, stopped, turned around, and opened the conversation. In other words, he met them halfway. And in this, we get a glimpse into how Jesus works. No one is left to simply search alone. God goes out to meet us in our search. St. Augustine would later note that actually we would not even be able to seek God unless he had already found us, much like the case here. We all want to seek him and we want to know him and may well be intimidated and get lost in the process. But here we see him standing, waiting, and encouraging to come and see. He starts out by asking them what they are looking for. Were they con men? Were they trying to attempt him or trap him in his legal views, like the scribes and the Pharisees? Were they looking for money or power or fame? Were they terrorists or nationalists or zealots against the ruling order? Or were they simply ordinary guys looking for decency, justice, and forgiveness from God? Well, evidently he didn't want to start an open conversation there and then, so instead he suggested that they come and you will see. So then, what are we looking for? What are our aims in life? What is our goal? What are we trying to get out of life? And the answer is the same, come and see. There were and there are no promises, but if we are genuine in our search, we can be sure that he is willing to listen, that he will indeed go halfway towards meeting us and work with us on our own meaningful search. And of course, we are introduced then to Peter, Interestingly, it was Andrew as one of the two who went out and brought his brother into the group, and then he took second place to him. Andrew, by the way, is only mentioned three times in the gospel story, here, and then again when he brought the boy with the loaves and fishes, and then when he brought the Greeks with questions to Jesus. Otherwise, Andrew was simply Peter's brother. Although he was one of the first to know Jesus, he simply dis disappeared into the band of 12. We can see Andrew as a humble, loyal, and unobtrusive follower, quite willing to take second place, having served his purpose. It was his brother to whom Jesus said, and I paraphrase, Peter, you're a brick and I'm going to use you in my new building, or something like that. Anyway, Enjoy the story, and as always, don't forget to text us with what you think. Thank you for partnering with WordNet. Now, we have an easy and fun way of making your donations to WordNet. Use the number that is on the screen to text your amount and follow the on-screen instructions. Thank you very much, and be blessed always.